Good evening. Glad you came out to be with us tonight. I want you to be blessed by this. The children's worked hard on it. Uh, they've not got to have a lot of practices together due to sickness and different things, but the Lord will see them through this. Amen. It's a, it's a good little play. I don't like to call it a play. It's, a, it's not play acting. It's actual events out of the Bible uh, that they're bringing to life, events that took place. But uh, be much in prayer for them. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, we do want to take up prayer request. Who's got a request this evening? Remember that. He's the best comfort you can have in the time of loss. Somebody else? Yes. All right. Remember that. Somebody else? Yes. Yes. Somebody else? Yes. God knows them. Somebody else? All right. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Remember my lost loved ones, my family up north, Uncle Bert and Aunt Bet. Remember them and all their. Uh, family, kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids. Got a lot of loss in my life. Uh, my brother, like I see him give his heart to the Lord. My brother-in-law, he needs prayer. He's struggling. He's in, uh, he's went from Kuwait to Saudi Arabia now, so he gets to come home in July, so pray for him. The Lord keep him safe. Anybody else? All right, let's bow our head and we'll take these requests to the Lord. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you tonight for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to come into your house. Lord, we know, Lord, the, the holiday may have done past, but thank you that we can celebrate the risen Savior every day of our life. We ask tonight, Lord, that you be with the children. Bless them, God. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd bless each and every one that's put forth the effort to be here tonight, God. These, these requests and these needs. God, that you would move as you see fit. We know that you're a God at hand. You're not a God that's so far off. Father, we do ask tonight that your will would be done and accomplished. Lord, those that need a touch in their body and need healing, Lord, we ask that you would heal them. Those, Lord, that's in the nursing homes and the hospital, shut in their own home, wherever they may be, we pray that you bless them. Pray tonight for those that's lost loved ones, God, that you would comfort them during this time. And most of all, God, we pray for the lost, Lord, that they would come to you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, bless our church and our church family. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Jesus, for it's in your holy name we do ask these things. Amen. Uncle, I didn't tell you, they're going to use this cordless and the blue one. It'll be the only two. All right, give us just a second to get them set up. Does anyone know what today is? I know. I know. And it's Easter. Does anyone know what Easter is all about? Yeah. Candy. The Easter Bunny. Heart and egg. Actually, none of those things have anything to do with Easter. How about we all sit back and let me take you on a journey through the past to understand the true meaning of Easter we need to start at the beginning. For unto you 
is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Are you talking about Jesus? Yes, I am. You're him at Christmas time. That's right. Today, we're going to learn more about him and what happened as he grew up. Did you know when he was just 12 years old, the Bible says, They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. You mean he was teaching the adults? He was. He told them he must be about his father's business, meaning even at a young age, he was doing the work that God sent him here to do. He did many wonderful things throughout his life. He even healed people, right? You're right, he did. (coughs) The Bible tells us of a blind man that came to him, and he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. We also read about a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. They brought him to Jesus. The Bible says, Straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. Also, there is an account where the young man was dead, and Jesus said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, it is. There's so much more that he did. Does anyone else know something that we learned Jesus did? Didn't he feed a bunch of people? You're right, he did. The Bible tells us there's a multitude which followed Jesus, and Jesus told his disciples, Give them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and brake, and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat, and were all filled. And there was taken up of the fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. You mean they had leftovers? They sure did. And if you think that's something, the Bible also tells us he controls the wind and the sea. There was a time where Jesus was on a ship, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Wow, Jesus is so cool. I bet everybody loved him and wanted to see him. For a time, yes. We read of a time when many people heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, and many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna, 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of, of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Wow, they really did love him. They did. But unfortunately, all of that changed. One of his disciples betrayed him. Another did not even knowing him. And the people turned on him. The Bible says, he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? You see, Judas had agreed to betray Jesus for money. And when Jesus was arrested, Peter, also one of the twelve, denied knowing Jesus three times. And the multitude led him to Pilate and began to accuse him. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. I will chastise him and release him. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. I know what crucifying means. They're going to put him on a cross. You're right. That's when the soldiers took him and prepared him to be put on the cross.
when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And gave up the ghost. So Jesus, being innocent of all he was accused of, was put on the cross to die for our sins. They laid him in a tomb next, right? They rolled a big stone in front of it. That's right. Jesus was laid to rest in a borrowed tomb, and they rolled the stone in front. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told these things unto the apostles. This is the real meaning of Easter and how Jesus died for our sins, conquered death, rose again on the third day, and lives forevermore to be an advocate for us and to the Father. So let's spread the news. He lives. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Feel my hands and look at my feet. It's okay and it's hard to believe. I have faith you will do greater things. It's my time to go, but before I leave. Go tell the world about me. I was dead, but now I live. I've got to go now for a little while. Goodbye is not the end. Don't forget the things that I taught you. I've conquered death and I hold the keys. Where I go, you will go to someday. But there's much to do 
here before you leave. So go tell the world about me. I was dead, but now I live. I've got to go now for a little while. For goodbye is not the end of the journey. The end of the road, my spirit is with you. Wherever you go, you have a purpose, and I have a plan. I'll make you this promise, I'll come back again. But until then, go tell the world about. Dead, but now I live. Oh, I've got to go <coughs> little while. But goodbye is not the end. <coughs> go tell them about me. I've got. Goodbye's not the end. Did a good job, didn't it? Amen. Appreciate all the parents for sparing the children. I know there's been some uh, extra running involved, but it's worth it. These children at a vulnerable age, we need to instill the Lord in their heart at this age. Because the world is, they're not holding back. They're not holding back. They're letting everything and anything be put into their life. We need to instill Jesus in their life. Amen. I want to turn it over to our pastor now. Let him lay, say what the Lord laid on his heart. Come right on up here, Jim. Amen. Let's give our pastor a hand as he comes. God bless you. wonderful program that the young people put on tonight. It's good to be reminded again of the price that Christ paid for our redemption. There was much suffering involved, bloodshed. His body was broken, but not one bone. And all that he suffered, not one bone of his body was broken thank God tonight and we got everything to thank God for don't we amen I realized that we had a lot of sickness going on during Easter and uh, the resurrection and weren't able to uh, uh, celebrate that time but we celebrate our risen Savior every day. We don't have to wait till uh, one special day each year to uh, be mindful of the price paid uh, that you and I could have this hope that we have tonight. Amen. And I want to say tonight that I appreciate the Lord, appreciate 
uh, all that he has done for each and every one of us. And surely when he was on that cross, he had you on his mind and he had me on his mind and the whole world. And it wasn't the spikes in his hands and his feet that held him there, really. It was the love uh, for humanity, the fulfillment of God's perfect plan uh, was accomplished that day on Golgotha's Hill, the place of a skull. No doubt had been a place where many a man had died for his wrongdoings, but this man died not for some wrong he had done, but because of the hatred that men had in their hearts toward him. Wanted to do away with him. Did the enemy... Did everything possible to try to etch in people's mind. The last scene that they would remember would be this so-called Messiah hanging on a cross and dying like a common criminal. But no, sir, it, it didn't stop at Calvary when they took him off the cross and laid him in the barred tomb. And it was barred because he wasn't going to stay there, but just three days, and uh, his body uh, would be resurrected unto life, thank God. But even during the time that the body laid in that tomb, his spirit was still searching for those, amen, that would take advantage of the opportunity to present them and accept Jesus as their Savior. He went into the heart of the earth, the Bible tells us, and he preached a message of repentance and deliverance unto those that were held captive. Thank God tonight. I'm glad I was exposed to uh, the uh, price paid on Calvary and how that even Christ, he was suffering, didn't start at Calvary. It, uh, he had the weight of the world up on his soldier, shoulders and Isaiah said he was a man of sorrow. There was no beauty to look upon. And uh, he was a man of grief. And uh, he, 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 his concern was that mankind would have an opportunity to call upon him and receive him into the heart. And I thank God for that time. Wonderful, wonderful uh, experience we've had here this evening. These children and, and uh, the ladies that uh, put forth the uh, effort to be able to present this to us tonight. And as I sat back there and I thought, Lord, yeah, uh, what suffering you endured uh, that I could have the hope I possess this evening. Amen. Did I deserve it? No, not at all. And uh, I should have been the one hanging on the cross because I was the one guilty of sin. But he took my place, he took your place, and he took the place of the whole world. Amen, and thank God tonight, amen, for that resurrection day, and he's coming back again. I'm looking for him to come again, amen. He's come without sin unto salvation to receive his people, those that prepared themselves and made themselves ready to meet him. Tonight, if you're here, I don't know the state of your soul tonight. If you know the Lord, it's wonderful. If you don't, you can know him as your personal Savior and the Lord of your life. John, if you want to have him sing a song, give people an opportunity. If someone felt like it tonight, pray, and then we'll pray with you as long as you want to pray. We'll pray with you. As they sing, if you feel like praying tonight, it's an opportunity to call upon the Lord.
children another hand tonight. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate Amanda and Jessica working with them, um, the talent that they've got together, and uh, all those that helped, Becky and Brooke, Chris, uh, he was voluntold, but uh, he helped as well. Uh, and again, you parents, we thank you for allowing your children to come. I do want to say this, I meant to look at the date a minute ago, but we got Bible school coming up in a little less than two months now, uh, be June the, starting June the 10th, we'll have Bible school that week, all week long, 6.30 every night, 6.30 every night, so uh, come be part of that if you can, bring the children, and uh, there'll be classes for all ages, got four class, four classes uh, from the youngest to the oldest even the even the adults that are a kid at heart and we'll have crafts for them and things so be much in prayer for that amen anybody got a word for the Lord yes yes amen somebody else <laughs> 